Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. From professional farmers to backyard gardeners, everyone is asking, where's the rain? To be clear, our region is far from an extreme drought, but according to USDA statistics, for the first six months of the year, more than 80% of Vermont is listed as abnormally dry to moderate drought. So when it comes to crops that need rain, the best advice is to be prepared for anything. Keith Silva tells us more from Madison County. At Lewis Creek Farm in Starksboro, the dog days of summer arrived early. Hank Bissell owns and operates the farm. He's hard pressed to remember the last time his crops got a good soaking rain. Uh, I think the last good precipitation we had was February. You know, the spring was all dry right through May right through uh, all of uh, June. And uh, so then I was, I was hearing on the news, they're saying, oh, the southern three counties were especially dry. What about Addison County? My God, we've been dry. So we've just been irrigating as much as we can for the last two or three weeks. When it's hot and dry, Bissell estimates he uses about 350,000 gallons of water per week to irrigate the 40 acres of vegetables he grows here. The work to irrigate all those acres is a full-time job. Well, three full-time jobs to be exact. The labor involved in irrigating is uh, enormous. It's this whole set of pipes that you put together a little bit like tinker toys and you put sprinklers in and you move the pump and the tractors all have to work and the pump has to not leak and and it's a lot of labor. And doing that three times a day, that's, that's two or three people pretty much full time moving irrigation. So that's a tremendous amount of labor. We were talking somewhere about this time of year last year. Bissell has been working with UVM Extension's Farming and Climate Change Program Coordinator, Joshua Faulkner. All the farmers Faulkner talks to mention how dry it's been and wonder how long the heat will last. Starting out a season dry and worried if we're going to get the rain and if, or if they're going to be battling this, this drought all year long. Loose Creek Farm acts as a laboratory for Faulkner to study sustainable irrigation practices, especially as the weather has become more unpredictable due to climate change. My advice to farmers is we really need to be prepared for anything. You know, the impacts of climate change on Vermont are clear. We're going into a season, we don't know if it's going to be the, the wettest year on record or the driest year on record. We could have the wettest May on record followed by the driest June on record. There's just so much uncertainty. So my advice to farmers is be ready for anything. And in terms of irrigation, that means accounting for the extra labor needs that could be required, making sure your pumps, your, all your sprinkler systems, um, your drip equipment is, you're well stocked, ready to go. My other recommendation would be to start to look into some soil moisture sensing equipment. Um, things like tensiometers where we can put those into the soil um, alongside a crop and then actually um, have a lot more information about how dry that soil is and whether we should be irrigating or not at any given point. We pumped out of the stream and we've come up through this red pipe here. Bissell hopes for rain. Until then, he's got work to do. First of all, I'm an incorrigible optimist, which involves a lot of denial. Uh, so <laughs> when you don't irrigate, <laughs> you know, you don't have a crop. It's sort of like there's no, uh, there's no choice uh, between the two. And, and when we can keep up with the irrigation, we have great crops. Right now, I've hired on some extra help so we can keep up doing the things we need to do in a timely fashion, as well as do all the irrigation, which in most years we don't have to irrigate. If the hot weather is here to stay, Vermont farmers have the tools and the know-how to soak it all in, come rain or shine. In Starksboro, I'm Keith Silva, 
with Across the Fence. For more information on Extension's farming and climate change program, visit the website on your screen, uvm.edu slash extension, and click on the link to Sustainable Agriculture. According to the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation, about 55% of properties in the state have their own wastewater treatment system, commonly known as a septic system. These systems can be found in rural areas where there's no access to a municipal septic or water. They're also used along waterways in the state and in lakeside neighborhoods where aging septic systems can be a real problem for water quality. Rebecca Gollin and video editor Marco Ayala tell us how some homeowners are tackling wastewater on one of Vermont's most problematic lakes. It's a field of dreams sort of thing. Build it and they will come. It's not everyone's idea of a field of dreams, but for septic and wastewater technician Jared Willey, this innovative septic system on the shores of Lake Carmi in Franklin has a lot going for it. So we provide a home for aerobic bacteria and we provide the uh, necessary environment for them to thrive, and they do all the work for us. This is an Advantech system. It's one of the approved, innovative, alternative septic technologies in Vermont. It's a recirculating system, so effluent that exits the septic tank is held and recirculated over the top of the filter. Uh, it feeds the bacteria that live inside the textile, the bacteria do the work of the treatment, and then there uh, is clean water coming out of the other side going to a soil absorption here. system, in this case a bottomless sand filter. This system was installed about a year ago. The traditional septic that was in place before it was not failing according to the standards set by the state, but the homeowner reached a point where he needed to upgrade. Well, when we bought the camp in 06, we had a 2,000 gallon holding tank, which basically when it was full, you had to empty. So it was okay for a few years and then it went to where we were spending more time at the lake. It got to be an inconvenience where we were having to get it pumped every, you know, maybe three, four times a year. So we decided to put in a, you know, a, a good system that would be, you know, environmentally friendly to the lake. Randy Farrar and his family decided to go with an alternative system, and after weighing their options, this Advantex was the best fit for their property. The waste moves through the tank, eventually draining the treated water that's the end product to the large sand pit out front. The entire unit has an internet-based telemetry system, which means that the maintenance operator, in this case Willie, can log in remotely to check on the conditions. For instance, if there's a high level alarm or if there's a leaking toilet or some other condition uh, that would uh, require maintenance, it allows us to, in most cases, only visit the site once a year. So it's kind of our eyes and ears on the site. Uh, we think about these systems uh, like miniature wastewater treatment plants because really they are. While maintenance is important for all septic systems, it's also a requirement by the state. In 2007, the Department of Environmental Conservation took over permitting septic systems. Before that, those permits were issued by individual towns, so there were different standards around the state. What happened in 2007, all systems were grandfathered in. So you may have a system that doesn't have a permit, and that's, that's fine. But if you add a bedroom or that system fails, then you will be required to get a permit. Or if you change your land use, if the, the use of your property, or if you convert from a seasonal property around a lakeshore like this to a, an all year use, then you will be required to get a permit. Graham Bradley oversees the septic permitting process for the state. He says that for those systems that were grandfathered in, problems can occur. An improperly maintained septic system can discharge pathogens or nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen to groundwater and the lake. That's long been a problem here at Carmi, which was recently the first lake in Vermont to be declared a lake in crisis. And while aging septic systems are part of the problem, they're only one piece of the puzzle. 
we have to think of the number of uh, sources of phosphorus. There's um, surface water running over the land surface and bringing phosphorus from an excess of fertilizer or manure placed on the land. But there's also phosphorus coming through the groundwater from septic systems around the lake. Now it's fair to say that we know that the majority of uh, nutrients is coming across the surface, from surface, from different land uses. Um, but here at Lake Kamai, we're coming to an understanding that we all need to do something to try and reduce that amount of phosphorus entering the lake. For those who do want to explore alternatives when the time comes to replace their septic, there are a number of options. This Advantech system is just one example. There's alternative innovative treatments that can be suited to almost any property. All homeowners should make informed decisions about uh, what to do when they're faced with a septic upgrade. Uh, things like how much space the system will take up, how much the system will cost to maintain. Uh, we talk about life cycle costs uh, a lot. And, uh, one system might be cheaper to install, but more expensive to operate. Besides Ferrar, a number of homeowners around Lake Carmi have upgraded to alternative systems. It may not be for everyone, but uh, it's a great system. Uh, it just has a, a very low impact on the environment. So if, if that's where you're trying to go, uh, I think it's a good system. It's an innovative technology that's helping these lakeside neighbors keep their waste where it belongs, in the septic tank. In Franklin, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. And that's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.